Jodie's been told that her grandma, Greta Verdun Bedford, was named Verdun in tribute to her eldest brother, Walter, who died in the First World War. And she's found out that Greta's parents, her great-grandparents on her dad's side, were George Bedford and Elizabeth, or Eliza, Clements. Jodie wants to start by looking into her great-grandparents. So if I type in my great-grandfather's name into the census, George Henry Bedford, hopefully I'm going to be able to find out some more details. I do know that at some point they've lived in Finchley, because that's where my grandma was from. OK. It's come up. So we've got George Henry Bedford. Oh, my gosh, he was a grave digger. Brutal. St Marlebone Cemetery. His wife, either Eliza or Elizabeth, was born in Eastville, Boston, Lincolnshire. Eliza Francis Bedford, their daughter, is 13. George, their son, is 10. Wait there. Where's Walter? Walter isn't on here, and as far as I'm concerned, he's the eldest son. I know he's alive at this point because he doesn't die until the First World War, if this is correct. The first daughter, Eliza, is born in Eastville, Lincolnshire, and the rest of the family are all born in East Finchley, London. So Walter, I'm kind of thinking is still in Eastville, Boston. Presumably, he's old enough to be on his own. Also, usually, firstborns are named after the dad, I think, traditionally. But what's interesting is the dad is George and their eldest son was Walter, and it was their second son they named George. Hmm. I think there's something potentially quite interesting that's going to be found out in Eastville. Oh, my mind's whirling now. Jodie is on her way to Lincolnshire. This is pretty flat. She knows that her great-grandma Eliza was born in Eastville, and she's hoping to find some trace of Eliza's eldest son, Walter, in the village. To learn more about the family, she's meeting social historian Dr. Laura Harrison at the village chapel. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Perhaps if we start with the census from 1881 for Eastville. So here's Eliza, yeah. my great grandmother. Yes. She's it. five. Yes. OK, so we've got Sophia, her mum, who's my great great grandmother. Yeah. She is bringing up. Five children. Yeah. So this is from 10 years later, the census in 1891. OK, so Lizzie Clements is Eliza. Yes. So she's now 16. Yeah. And is this the same street? No, so you might notice here... Fulham in London? Yes. At 16? Yeah. There's no parents? No, so you can have a look oh, yeah. here at so... the family that she's living with and what her position might be. Herman, who's the head of the family, yeah. and he's married, and his wife is Emily, Emily, and they've got two sons, Philip and Augustus. And then we've got Lizzie Clement, and what does that say? So that says servant. Wow. I mean, you'll notice that she's the only domestic in that household, so she's probably sort of a general dog's body, <laughs> not to yeah. put too fine a point on it. Right, OK, I might be jumping ahead. <laughs> but... ..this is around the age of having a child who potentially could be 17, 18... ..when we jump forward to the 1911 census. Mm -hmm. I'm just slightly panicked about Herman, who's 45 and married with a 16-year-old servant. Is that a valid concern? I mean, it's definitely something that happened. I suppose you just fear 
that this is a young girl being taken advantage of. But we, we do know a little more. We have a document here. This is a birth certificate. Yeah. 1893, yeah. John Walter. OK. OK, OK, OK. Name of mother. Eliza. Oh, I can't read it. The handwriting's <laughs> so fancy. <laughs> so that's Eliza Clements. Where's the father? The father's not there. Yeah. OK. I am strongly accusing Herman. <laughs> <laughs> But obviously, we'll never know, will no, we? No, we don't know. Because you can't father find is. that out, can you? No. And so maybe Walter never knew. Yeah, in all likelihood, he would never have known who his father was. But she's given birth up here. Yeah. So she's come back to Lincolnshire, to Boston, presumably come home. She's probably had to do that same journey at 18, morning <laughs> sick, and absolutely terrified. Yeah. All by herself. Aren't women amazing? They are. Yeah. <laughs> Jodie has learned that the identity of her great-uncle Walter's father is unknown. When Walter was four in 1897, his mother Eliza, Jodie's great-grandmother, married George Bedford. The couple's daughter, also called Eliza, was born the same year, and in all, they had eight children together. We can see a little bit about where the family are in this census from 1901. Right, so we're still here. So we've got John W. Clements, who is Walter. Yep. And Walter is seven. Yes. And he is, what does that say? Grandson. To Sophia Clements. And where's his mum? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't seem to be on here. Is she on here? No, she's not listed no, there. So okay. she's moved with George Bedford to East Finchley. And left him? Yeah. Right. So, do we know why? It could be a sort of purely economic decision. Um, another mouth to feed. It could be because of the stigma of, of having an illegitimate child. Perhaps George Bedford didn't pass possibly want yeah. um, another man's child living yeah. with the family. So they've gone to London and they have their next child down there who is named George, which, reading the list of siblings, I was surprised that the eldest son wasn't named after the dad. Yeah. See, I kind of suspected little things like this, <laughs> but... So it's just that idea of a little kid being left and, you know... Yeah, that's just, like, slightly heartbreaking. I wonder if she saw him again? His mother, Eliza? Cos in this day and age, there isn't the opportunity to just bez it home. No. <laughs> no it, would be, it would be quite a sort of journey to make. Well, we do actually have a newspaper article that tells you a little bit more about Walter. The Boston Guardian and Lincolnshire Independent, Saturday, October 24th, 1914. Red Cross, Walter Clements and H. Alliwell, members of the local branch of the Red Cross Society, left the village on Wednesday morning for duty at Netley Hospital. So, where's that, Netley Hospital? So, Netley is in Southampton, a huge military hospital. I mean, if you look at the date, you can see this is October. 1914. Yeah. The First World War has just started. Yeah. So he's 21 years old. And if you're working for the Red Cross, you're obviously contributing. Yeah, he's volunteering. Wow. I mean, that is a fair adventure. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> My great-uncle Walter, his identity has been decided since before he was born. He's a child born out of wedlock to a teenage mum who's then moved away. And that will have been his entire life, and everyone knowing that. And he's, whereas the idea of moving to somewhere brand new, you can be who you want to be. It's so kind of 
Heartbreaking to think that this 21 year old who's starting probably the first major adventure of his life, it is the last and that he isn't going to make it to 30. And, but at this point, I've no idea what his journey is. What gets him from Southampton to France?